Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, uh, still working on industrial electronics uh, entry. Uh, this platform uh, having a continuation from where we left now on question number three from the question paper of April 2021. So that's the question paper that we're going to focus on on number three and see what we actually given and how are we supposed to answer uh, these typical questions. As you can see, the whole of this question was actually having a total of 18 marks, which is uh, a lot in exam uh, that you're supposed to get. All right, so let us quickly rush through the questions. Question 3.1, we are given um, the transistors, that is transistors are not only used in amplifier switch circuits, they may be used as regulators. So take note guys, uh, remember in N2, you are focusing, we are focusing actually on uh, amplifier switch, uh, that was your major part that you're working on now. We are saying they cannot only be used there. They can be used as a regulator. Okay. Draw a neat labeled circuit diagram of a transistor used as a constant current take note regulator. So it must be a constant current uh, regulator. All right. So this is what I'm having for you. Uh, remember, when you are given a regulator, you've got the V in, which is unregulated, then the V out, which is uh, regulated. So that is uh, the consideration that you are given. And uh, here, having our NPN transistor, uh, the Zener diode, that is the one that we have, uh, that is DZRE, which is the emitter resistance, the base resistance, RL, which is the the load resistor at the output. So make sure that you clearly indicate, especially this part of uh, a diode, make sure this uh, Zener diode is represented, the transistor also, which is your NPN transistor, and this layout of the output. That is the major important part that you're supposed to indicate or to show on your diagram so that you can be able to get a total of uh, Three marks from that, as you can see, guys. All right, the 3.2 are given that the load current, the load line of a common emitter amplifier represents all the possible combinations of collector currents and collector emitter voltages for amplification. The position of the bias point determines the amplification class. Describe the following amplification classes. So this is a direct uh, question of our transistors. We are supposed to uh, work on how these classes, uh, how are they operating in these classes? So that is uh, the question. All right, so we are going to start with the class B. That is the one that we have in uh, class B, the bias. Okay, so let's, let me just write here. So this is our class B. All right, so in the class B part, the bias point is at the cutoff point. Only the positive half or of the input will show on the output only the half. The output is shown only half of the amplified version of the input. So there, they are just saying any two because you're given two marks there. So that is, uh, you just have to write any two from those guys. I think uh, it's actually clear. All right, let's check the class C, the one that you're having. So on the class C part, that is where we are given. So this is class C. The bias point is below the cutoff point. All right, then the point two less than half of the input is shown on the output less than half. There we are actually completing half, but here it's less than a half. All right, the output is shown is less than half of the amplified version of the input. So as you can see, actually this uh, part here, uh, which is the same thing like what we had on our class B, this part here or this point it's just one and the same. They have similar points, just a way of writing, but these are actually similar points. All right, so that was it on 3.22. 3.3, we are given, answer the following questions regarding phototransistors. Uh, what actually do we have on a phototransistor there? We've got a second diagram that we are given. Okay, uh, that is the other part of actually. But the first part was draw a neat labeled characteristic curve of a phototransistor, the characteristic uh, cave of a photo transistor, which is the one that we have. Remember, a photo transistor actually works with uh, light. So we have got um, what is important for you is to actually indicate your axis properly. Okay, there was another axis having VCE, which is the voltage. Uh, then 
the vertical axis having the current, which is the collector current in milliamps, uh, then you can just indicate any power per square centimeter that you have uh, from, this is just a sketch guys that you're having. So make sure that you sketch something that is visible and readable and not forgetting to show at below the first point when we are having a little light, that is where you're going to have the dark current. Then as the light increases, that is where we can have at least an output which is sensible, uh, which is uh, which is uh, actually sensible from what we have from the dark current. So that is uh, the diagram that you're just giving to, that we're supposed to have, which is the characteristic have. All right, um, then 3.22, we are now given that fig four shows the second diagram. So guys, take note and take note properly of this second diagram because in another question paper, they will ask you, to draw this circuit diagram. Now they've given you, and what I like about department is that they have a certain way that they want you to present your work. So when you're asked to draw the circuit diagram of a photo transistor, this is exactly how they want you to have it. Yes, you can have other circuit diagrams, but try by all means to have exactly this circuit diagram. Okay, anyways, this question was not about the circuit diagram. It was for us to describe the operation of the circuit. How does this circuit actually operates all right so as you can see it's a photo uh, transistor we've got the input here which is the light that is transferred and then we've got the flow of current into the transistor that is where we are going to have if this light is there then we are going to have a contact on the relays that is uh, to make sure that current can even flow because they will close the contacts there okay so let me just put the way that these guys, they want you to write it off. Okay, uh, the photo transistor Q1 drives the BJT uh, Q2. When light falls on Q1, it switches on and drives the base of Q2 into saturation. That I was saying when Q1, that is our Q1 here, which is our photo transistor when light falls, then this will be driven out. Okay, so what happens after that? The emitter current through the relay energizes it. That is where we are going to have it being closed, the contacts, because remember it's a relay, it has got those contacts, so they were actually closed and there is no, uh, because when they close, it's like passing in. Uh, if there is current, then it's going to be seen on the other side of the relay. Okay, the diode across the relay prevents large voltage transient at the collector of what? Of Q2, when the transistor is switched off, so we have a diode that is given here. Let me show, which is actually preventing that this diode that we have here. So it's actually connected at the collector of Q2. Okay, this is our Q2. We have got, remember, we've got our emitter, the collector, and the base. So the diode is connected to the collector just to prevent uh, that when this uh, switches off suddenly. So that is the principle of operation that you are supposed to have. Sorry for that, that you're supposed to have all that you're supposed to describe. So there, they actually say any two, you can actually obtain two marks because of the marks that are given here. Let's see what were the marks here. Okay, it was just two marks, okay? So any two from there, you can actually obtain full marks, okay? Uh, 3.4, draw a neat labeled circuit diagram of an operational amplifier that is used as an audio amplifier. That is four marks for that just to draw an amplifier which is used as an audio amplifier. So we have it uh, on 3.4, that is our audio amplifier. So that is the circuit that you're going to have. Uh, take note, you're having the input uh, V1 to the op amp, which is our operational amplifier. Then we have got our RF, R3, the low resistor RL, C2, the output. So I think uh, we actually have something that is uh, direct from there. If uh, we can be able to mention properly the diagram, the, uh, when you're working with diagrams, guys, make sure that your presentation is actually straight uh, forward. Don't draw diagrams which are not clear. Make sure that your diagram is clear and also straightforward. All right, so that's it. Uh, 3.5 we are given. If the input wave of an integrating operational amplifier in is a square wave, draw the output waveform, if it is a square wave, guys, you know, our square wave output. So the question is just for you to draw the output of a square wave. Remember, a square is supposed to have the same 
distance here. If this is two, this is supposed to be negative two and so on. So that's uh, the presentation that you're going to have. So we've got the input and then the output. So as you can see, the output is just in the negative region. So there, what is important is one for inversion, the other for form and alignment with the V1. So that is where we are going to have your parts. And most important, guys, this is just two marks. So I wish you the best, guys, in your exams. As we are revising, let us try to revise as much question papers as possible. Uh, actually, we do not have time left. So let us try to revise as much as we can, more question papers, more revisions at Maison African Motives, working on industrial electronics and three till we meet again.